Hi, so while I was looking around, I actually came across this stuff. Um, it's supposed to be aluminium welding rod. It's, it's not, it's a brazing rod. But I saw lots of demonstrations on this, uh, and it's supposed to be flux cord as well, incidentally. But I saw lots of demonstrations on it, and it seemed to have really quite good strength. And I thought, oh, okay, I must give that a go when I get a project sometime. And now I was thinking about Tesla turbines. The common way of making a Tesla turbine is actually in uh, pump configuration. You basically cut a circular hole, you make your turbine, you drop your turbine in. Now, when you're using Tesla turbines for wind, you actually use something called an involute, not a, an actual circle. And I give you a close-up of this here, because that's an involute. So I um, knocked together a quick rotor. The rotor's really easy, actually, because I have a lot of this stuff lying around. This is sheet aluminium um, used for roofing and, and window surrounds. Dead easy to cut, nice, nice light, thin gauge. So I cut myself 10 like that bolt them together on a backing plate, and that is my rotor. And I plan on putting it on the involute case to see how this will do as a wind generator. Anyway, with all that aside, it also gives me an excellent excuse to try one of these. So I'm going to give that a go by putting together this section of the Tesla turbine. So let's have a close-up of that. So I'm going to try it on this first, which is attaching the axle to the body of the uh, turbine rotor. You just give it a brush, apparently, with this little stainless steel brush, and then heat it up and rub that on, and wait for it to flow. So let's give that a go. Well, it applies. Okay, so this isn't an involute. It's not actually a circle. It's more like a snail shell, so you can see it curling around like that. What I'm going to do is hold it in place with the weight while I actually um, use this weld rod on it. So I'm going to get welding it because you're probably not going to see very much, and we'll have a look at the result. Okay, so just to let you know, this is not an um, advertisement. I bought this from eBay, actually, because I'd seen it around, and I thought maybe it was time to give it a go. So that's what I did. Now, um, actually, the joints here are really quite ropey. Um, that's my skill. I mean, I've just picked this up and given this a go, so it's pretty ropey. But by the time I got to here, actually, I was getting quite good. So, and this one here that I did here is lovely. So it takes about, I suppose, half an hour or so of practice. I've used a whole rod. Half an hour of practice and you're going to be there. I also did the, same, the, the axle, and the axle seems quite strong, actually. So there is my Envolute Tesla turbine. I'm going to carry on with this, obviously, because uh, I still need to put some brackets on it, mount it, put some bearings on it, and attach a generator. But it's going to have a front cover, and it's going to be sitting about like that. So there's my Tesla. Now, the stuff I bought was called Durafix Easy Weld, and like I say, I just got it from eBay. Piece of cake. Uh, they give you this stupid little brush, incidentally, but it seems it's a part mechanical bond, so you do need to clean it and you do need to scratch it. I got really fed up with that, particularly on this rod, actually, so I just used a bit of 60 grit um, sandpaper, went over with 60 grit sandpaper, and it was actually better than mucking around with this little brush. So that little brush is about as much use as a chocolate teapot. But this stuff, I have to say, I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to uh, play around with it some more, because as you know, I love fabrication, I love machining. I quite often fold, pop, rivet, and screw things together. But I'm going to be uh, aluminium brazing now, because we've got the aluminium braze, which is really cool. That's actually a pain in the neck to do, unless you can do something like that. You can't, you can't really do anything with that until you can actually braze the thing together. So making that involute for the Tesla turbine was a piece of cake. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know about that, because I really think it's extraordinarily useful uh, and worth a play. This is a um, 
named one. There are sort of patterns around and, and there are a few pence for a stick. I went and paid, uh, I think I paid 40 quid for 30 rods, so a little expensive, but I wanted it to work actually. I'm going to buy some cheaper ones and give them a go and see what happens, but these ones, awesome stuff. Highly recommend it. Um, I'll get on and finish that. So a couple of other things actually. That this, all that is, is a, a strip of flat bar I got from the local store and I put it through a metal bender, bent it into a circle, prized it up with my hands a little bit. So that's how I made that piece of cake. So a little bit more about this stuff. Um, you actually just use an ordinary torch. This is mine that I used with it. It's a butane propane mix, so nothing special about it. It's not even particularly expensive. You have to get it up to heat. Now, um, I put wood on it because I've heard that if you clamp it with or uh, hold it with too much metal, it takes ages to heat, sort of four or five minutes or something, because you've got to heat the metal up. Um, I used wood, and it took about a minute or two to get hot enough for that to flow. Now, initially, I was kind of too close to the flame with this. Later on, when the weld got better, what it did was I would heat the metal and then run this across on, without the flame on it, and it would only run when the metal was hot enough, and that seems to make a better job and a better bond. I was sort of doing it a bit like soldering first, where, you know, you heat the metal and you run the solder into the heat. Here, what I did was heat the metal and take the heat away and then rub that on. It is kind of a mechanical bond, so you do need to rub it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't flow the same way solder flows. You've got to give it a, a, a pass over and smudge it around a little bit to get it in there. But um, nothing special about the equipment I used particularly. Bog standard torch and it seemed to work really well. Anyway, as I say, I think it's great and I'm going to be using it in a few, quite a few more things. I thought it would be of interest to everybody. If you haven't seen it, it's probably worth having a look at a few more videos on it. If you like fabrication aluminium yourself, it's probably worth grabbing a few sticks and giving it a go. So I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.